Hello everyone, this is the Jenkins Platform SIG meeting. Today we're on August 27, 2024. And around the table today we have Mark Wade, Kevin Martins, and myself, uh, Bruno Verschen. On the agenda, we have, um, as usual, container image updates for the controller and agents. Um, clicked on the wrong button, sorry. Now I have my mouse working again, sorry. Uh, We'll talk about the Spring project uh, security, Java 21 support, and a little something to finish with Ubuntu. So um, I would be tempted to see not so much happen during the summer, but that's not really the case. Jenkins is still working. The updates are making their way into the Jenkins core. Um, the Docker images are still built. The thing is, we I haven't seen anything really major or any thing breaking the um the jenkins for our users so we have a new lts and i guess you made a video with darren pop once again mark yes so i didn't see anything really uh groundbreaking in the change logs is there anything uh, our users should be aware of yeah the most the most crucial thing in the the lts was the security fix yeah, it, it's a and I've seen recently an article talking about people who made the mistake of not doing the security installation of our January 2024 security fix and were now being actively exploited. Oh. So, so when when Jenkins publishes a security fix, especially if you are hosting a publicly accessible instance, you need to install that waiting seven months to install it, especially one that we declare critical, like the January one was, and like this one was, uh, is very important that you heed our invitation to install it promptly. Yeah, I won't be naming names, but I have seen a thread on Reddit somewhere. Somebody was complaining about how do I, why do I have to update once again my Jenkins instance because of security fix? How does that even happen? Why do we have security breaches? Uh, um, it happens all the time to all the software. You know, it's a bad habit not to update your software. You have to do it on a regular basis. So please do it as soon as possible and stop complaining, if you will. Uh, because yes, of course, it happens just about everywhere, be it on your Linux distro, on your SSH um, software, just about everywhere. So updating, reading the changelog, knowing what you do uh, is a good thing. And yes, you have to update. So once again, if you are using an older uh, LTS, um, upgrade to the 2462.1. Right. Uh, now, when it comes to the weeklies, of course, they have the security uh, fix uh, in them. And I did not see um, anything really um, important. Of course, we have the usual uh, version bumps from Debian and UB8. Um, we have a DNS argument related error message. This one, I am not a specialist, so I don't know exactly what it was about. It was uh, just any of you. Is, yeah. Yeah. So, so what a contributor did was provide documentation update. Oh, and the documentation okay. update is much appreciated. And it's just a documentation update. It says, oh. hey, if you get this message, sometimes the crucial thing is you have misconfigured your DNS. And you can fix that by these two command line arguments or by this oh. entry in your uh, Docker or oh in your YAML file. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yes, we do love uh, documentation updates. And most of the time, people prefer to submit some code updates, but documentation is also fine, um, isn't it, um, Kevin? <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, now for the Jenkins agent, we only saw one new release for the SSH agent. And once again, nothing major, just uh, a bump of the Git version on Windows. But for the Docker agent, we saw tons of new releases during summer, but uh, there is nothing really new. One thing which is cool and could be useful for, for some people is the um, Jenkins agent file add, because I think most ev almost everything um, is configurable for uh, Jenkins and has an environment variable to uh, back it up. And the only thing that was missing was the um, 
uh, Jenkins agent file because it was nowhere to be found. So this um, pull request just added the um, environment variable and the documentation that goes with it, which is pretty good, I would say. Uh, and then we had a few version bumps, but nothing major. I haven't seen anything new um, or in the work in progress, nothing on the contrary. The Docker agent uh, pull request is still a work in progress. It has been for several weeks now, but no emergency, so that can stay like that. Same for Docker SSH agent, nothing new. Now we're done with the Docker images, and we have to talk about the Spring project, who made an end-of-life announcement for the Spring Security 5.x, if I'm not mistaken. So we will have to move to Spring Security 6.x and Basil uh, Crow. Uh, Adrien Le Charpentier and a lot of other people are working on moving uh, the um, dependencies of Jenkins to the Spring Security 6.x and it will happen. It's happening uh, with several steps and the first steps are already done and working pretty well, I would say. And there are still a few steps to reach the goal. Mark, would you have um, some insights to uh, about this project? Sure. So we've we've successfully delivered Jetty 12 plus EE8 in 2.472 two weeks ago. Uh, we're now looking forward to Jetty 12 plus EE9 either next week in 2.475 or the following week in 2.476. Really? Is that early? Yes. So, well, we, we want it, we have to, we will choose the LTS baseline September 18th. And we would like one or two weeks of exposure to the Jenkins community of Jetty 12 EE9 before it's selected for a base, the LTS baseline. Yeah, and we very think, much yeah. want it in the LTS baseline for the 30th of October LTS release. I get it. I think two months ago we were pretty pessimistic, I would say. Uh, I think we were talking about October, and now it's September. How come? <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, it's time. Time has marched forward, and with the forward march of time, we have actually an awful lot of work that has been successfully accomplished. And so we're we're continuing that work. There's still plenty yet to do. There are lots of things we have to do, but we're very grateful for the plugin compatibility test system that lets us test plugins together with each other and the acceptance test harness that lets us test Jenkins through the user interface. So it really drives it with a, user, with a UI using Selenium. And, and those two things have been crucial to help us be sure that we've got the right set of changes and that we can preserve compatibility. Now, it's, it's fun to tell the story of what's happening in the larger communities as a whole. Um, the Eclipse JGit project, for instance, is also planning that in September they will s drop their support for Java 11 and switch to only Java 17. And the GitLab for J API jar file, the thing that we use for the GitLab branch source plugin, is planning to drop support for Spring Security 5 and Spring Framework 5 and switch to Spring Security 6. And now, they, they haven't stated a timeline for theirs, but it's cool to see other open source projects going through this same transition, thinking about finding a path forward, etc. Yeah, congratulations to all the team who made that possible. Well, and, and there's an enormous amount of work still, and, and that's ah. let's not kid ourselves that, that the work is done. There's still lots of work to do, but it's looking quite good. I've been testing with it for weeks, and thanks for your uh, your Docker container image that oh. that lets people use it conveniently. I'm, I'm very impressed with being able to use containers to do the same kind of testing without much thought. In my case, I manage my own controller, so I, I really update individually, but people who want to help us could use your container image from the from the the demonstrations from the the tutorials thank you mark uh you know what it's linked to the hammer and nail um problem when the only tool you have is a hammer everything looks like a nail so when you told me about that say of course i will reuse <laughs> jenkins quick start tutorials docker images and do something with that so that's why it's working. Uh, we started with a solid foundation and 
But it's cool to know that it could be useful to somebody. Thanks a lot. Um, by the way, you were telling us about JDK 17 and other projects also getting rid of uh, JDK 11. So what's new about the Java 21 support and the 2 plus 2 plus 2 Java support plan? Yeah, so we're, we're executing according to the plan. I haven't done an update, and given that I'll be going on vacation this week for a week and a half, I probably won't do an update for at least two or three more weeks. But but we are executing the plan, and we're getting ready to drop support for Java 11. We've already dropped it from Jenkins Weekly, and we will drop it from Jenkins LTS at the end of October. Oh, that's good news. Um, you know, I will be giving a talk at the Temerin Summit, uh, September 10th, and the last part of the talk is about uh, Jenkins uh, support 2 plus 2 plus 2. So I wanted to know if there was uh, a scoop or anything really new that I could uh, let them know. But no, everything is already written down and ready to go. Well, and and I, I like that you're talking about it at that location. That's really great because they have they may have a different support horizon than we do. I know at Java 11 they do, for instance. They've, they've chosen to extend the life cycle of Java 11. Uh, further than we were willing to support it. And so this is a good way for others to hear how how a project is handling the multiple concurrent Java versions problem or the, the multiple concurrent Java versions question. Yeah, because um, when JDK 19 was all new, hot from the oven, we tried it, we tested it within the Jenkins infra. And when the JDK 21 early access were there, we also tried them. And Java 22 is already available as an early access, but we are just ignoring it. So I would like them to know that it's not because we don't like using Tamarin early access anymore. It's just because we now know how to handle the life cycle of Java on our side. That's a plan that the community decided, of course, with your help. And so we won't be testing any version of Java. We'll stick to FTS version as, yeah. Yeah, well, and I'd, I'd even frame it slightly differently. It's Java 22 may be very interesting to us, but right now we have to keep our first focus on spring security. Of course. Right, so it's not a matter that Java, 20, we, we do like to test the incremental Java versions, 22, 23, and 24, I think will all be interesting to us. Really? But yeah, not to support, just to safeguard ourselves against 25, yeah. right? Because if we if we skip one in our evaluation, we later can suffer because now we have to do a, a double hop to get to the next version. Yeah. So uh, when it was Java 19, I think we installed it on weekly CI. Am I right? Oh, yeah, I, that's the case. So we may do the same with Java 22 once we are done with the spring security? I think so. I suspect that we will be evaluating new Java versions um, systematically just because it keeps us from being surprised by an LTS that has major new things that we didn't expect. Yeah, if I remember correctly, when we tried JDK 19, we discovered something that needed to be fixed in order to work with all, yeah. So exactly. maybe that will be the same pattern for newer versions of Java. And you know how much I like novelty? So of course, if I can test with recent versions, all the access uh, of Java, I will do it gladly. And even on some exotic architectures, why not? <laughs> you have to find fun, you know, uh, doing your work. Right. Thanks a lot, Mark. Um, anything else, Kevin or Mark, regarding this subject of JDK support? Okay, that's a no. Uh, then last item I had on the list was something entered by you, Mark. Interesting, Severic Borg in Ubuntu 24.04 on R64. As much as I like R64, yes, bugs also exist on this platform. Tell sure. us more, Mark. Yeah, and this one, this one is an obscure one. It, the only reason it's particularly relevant to me is we've got a donated ARM64 server that sits at in my network. And it happens to be running Ubuntu 24, so I have to worry about this bug's impact. Uh, it seems to only affect curl, not wget. So, so it's re rather specific and somewhat obscure, but it does affect pop very popular websites, so sites like Microsoft.com. So, so the the fact that the bug is there 
we're going to, we're going to wait for it and hope that the Ubuntu team will get it fixed before too long or that Curl will fix it. Whoever's got the actual bug will fix it. Okay. Had I attended the uh, infra team meeting, I would know, uh, but uh, do we have a roadmap uh, for the Ubuntu 24.0 for upgrade for our infrastructure? We've, we've accepted that we'll put it on hold for a month or two in part okay. because of this bug, because we'd, we'd like to give Ubuntu time to fix it. And in part because we, because we have other things that are more, more oh. urgent for us. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Kevin, Mark, any other subject you would like to be addressed during this meeting? None from me. Not from me either. Thanks a lot, folks. So we'll wrap it up. The um, recording should be available from 24 to 48 hours, and we should see each other weeks from now. I was just thinking because I'm supposed to go in a conference. I was just... No, I will be there. I should be there. So see you two weeks from now. Thanks a lot for your time. Bye-bye.